Welcome everyone to this 2021 Info Security webinar. We'll be discussing today how the one can actually help you during your IT transformation or your IT innovation. And I'm lucky enough to have today with me Loïc Lallet, CTO of Kerprot, who could join us. Unfortunately, Yoris could not join us, but we'll come back on that. Today's agenda for the webinar, let's try to keep it fun and uh, informational. We will go through an advanced presentation video to understand in which context this uh, transformation happened. And then we will go through the technical review and the architecture review of what was uh, performed, how and why. Then we will go to Kerprod use case with a presentation of Kerprod explanation from Loic. And then again, we will deep dive into the technical aspects and how we can learn from these innovation. We'll of course follow up with the questions uh, and on this use case, please feel free to shoot. We have a team in the back collecting your questions to make sure nobody uh, remains unanswered. But to start, we'll talk about Hervance and their migration with an SD1 concept. So Hervance, before being Hervance Group, was in the context of merge and acquisition. It was a large group that had to be split and part of the companies had to be made autonomous. They had to be standalone on a network perspective and then later on be reintegrated into a bigger party. Of course, business keeps running. It's merge and acquisition. They must keep on the good numbers. And one is definitely not the only project and gone. To explain this, uh, we were lucky to collect a video from um, Joris van den Broek, who's going to explain us with his own words what was the project at stake. Hi, and welcome to this 2021 InfoSecurity webinar about one transformation and how one can help you through your digital transformation journey. We will discuss today a real use case of one of our customers and how one transformation and one evolution help them in their uh, projects. I'm here today with Joris van den Broek, Infrastructure Architect at Ervans Group. Hi, Joris, good to have you here today. Thank you very much, happy to be here. So, Joris, could you tell us and the audience a bit more about your company? We design and distribute air handling solutions to improve indoor air quality. We have activities mainly in Europe, but also beyond, and have several branches within several European countries. And let's uh, jump back in time. In 2019, you are walking through the alleys of InfoSecurity at a time where it was still possible. Um, what is the situation of your company at that time? What are you looking for? At the time, we were going through a divestment process to form what today has become Airvans Group. One of the requirements of the project was to split away a part of the network of the local and slow MPLS and uh, have independence for our local branches without interrupting daily business activity, which continued as usual also keeping in mind that we would have to present a long-term roadmap and a long-term solution. So a solution that provides us the flexibility of both would have been our ideal answer. So in short, what would be the main business requirements of this project? There was absolutely no margin to have interruption in the day-to-day -day business, so that was very important. At the same time, we had a big requirement for flexibility of the network itself because of the different migration projects happening in the context of the project. And last but not least, the bandwidth needed to be increased, again, because of the bandwidth requirement of the different migrations that were going on within the project. Preferably for us was also to have just one single partner and one single point of contact to manage it all because of the constraint of internal resource that were not available to manage it all internally. So, what scenario did you choose? How did this transformation happen? To implement the transformation, we decided to go with a step-by-step -step implementation. The first step being the very quick, in a matter of weeks, implementation of the Peplink SD1 routers provided by Venn to realize the logical separation of the network in the local branches. The next step was to take advantage of the available mobile bandwidth on top of the limited local MPLS bandwidth to help speed up the different migration projects that we had to go through. The last step was the transfer of the MPLS contracts from the former ISP to VEN, which was a long and painful process. 
thankfully then manages it for us. So can we say that in this scenario, wireless SD1 was playing a key role? Absolutely. The wireless SD1 is the strong foundation, which is an enabler for all of the other provided services. And looking back, what went better than expected? Better than expected was the local implementation, where we saw that we could take advantage of the local partners of Venn, which helped us respond very quickly. A second part that we were surprised to find was also the integration of other network equipment within the same ecosystem, such as switches or wireless access points, which can be managed in a very similar fashion. What would be your recommendation for a successful digital transformation? To align with the business, to set clear goals, to make sure that you understand what you're trying to achieve. The technology is there. The technology is flexible enough to help you achieve them. Well, today, 2021, uh, so two years after our first encounter, uh, how would you describe the current situation of Airvance Group? Today, Airvance Group is a unified group of companies. We still have various technologies within our perimeter. The next step is that we now look at the long term and formulate a roadmap on how we want to move forward. We're very happy to take advantage of the flexibility of the solutions that we chose a couple of years ago to help us implement this roadmap. Joris, thanks a lot for sharing with us today. That was very interesting. Uh, I think we learned a lot about the important elements during a digital transformation and what can help us achieve these goals in a timely manner. So thanks a lot again for that. My pleasure and thank you for inviting me. So we will now revert back to the webinar where we'll go uh, more in details into the architecture and the wireless SD1 solution that was used for Ervance Group. Don't forget also that you can subscribe for a demo. Yes, I'm coming back on that one later anyway. So if we are looking about the key elements that were shared by Yoris, it's a discussion between IT and business. We need a transformation. We must go to a transformation, but we cannot afford an impact on the business and on the daily operation. It has to be executed as fast as possible. But in the meantime, we know that for our growth, we need more bandwidth. They are in a situation where 20 sites in the UK, 30 sites in France, these are warehouses, distribution points, typically places where connectivity is not granted. It has to be managed difficultly. Uh, the lines are quite long. So if we look more on the architecture side, it's not really surprising what we will find. They have data traffic internal, their internet traffic, VoIP, going through an MPLS network, which is very classic. There is nothing new there. Everyone went through this kind of architecture once in their lifetime as a company. The important part of the migration is actually just phase one. Introducing in the network without bringing a big disruption, this SD1 router brings you a lot of flexibility. Suddenly, you get a local internet breakout, which allows you to bring your Office 365 or your internet traffic as fast as possible outside of your network. You keep your MPLS line, which is barely a megabit, just for your data traffic. You didn't change actually anything in your IP configuration because you leverage on very old techniques that exist for quite a while. We call it drop-in mode. You could find other names with other vendors, but basically your MPLS router is still there. Your switch and your internal IPs are still the same. And we just put ourselves in the middle to route either the traffic towards your internal network either towards the internet. So suddenly on one side, you go from one megabit to one megabit plus the bandwidth of everything available on MTE. And that can really easily go up to 20 megabit in upload and 2030 in download. So after phase one, we actually have already secured increase of bandwidth. We have secured a smooth transition because the interruption on the business operation was taking the cable out and putting it back in. If we wanted to push further and even lower the intervention, it would have been possible. But in good collaboration between businesses and IT, 
the migration scenario was pulling the cable out, putting it back in, in the new SD1 router, and voila, we could now discuss about phase two. Phase two was adding a broadband connection, adding more throughput to the SD1 layer, and still keeping the MPLS. And at some point, when we feel confident, when all the integration aspects and tests have been performed, it's just a matter of a click. The orchestrator will push the reconfiguration on all the routers and will actually migrate you to a fully integrated SD1 network. So this step-by-step -step approach and controlling between IT and business, what is the scenario we want to follow is quite important. But you can't do this without using specific technologies that are, as said Yoris, already available and for quite some time now. Would it be the brand pepling that we use or others? If you look at what is available, lots of networks, 3EE02, if we're talking about the UK, if you take all these access layers and you combine them together, you define your migration plan, you can actually greatly limit the impacts on your business. This ended up for uh, this project in quite a success. No impact on the business, not really no impact, but a defined impact in agreement with the business. We could quickly decorrelate in a matter of weeks, the two networks. We could increase the bandwidth. We did it for the sites in UK. We prepared it for the sites in France where they can benefit from the added uh, bandwidth for the mobile. Actually, they decided to follow a more contractual approach for the MPLS, which tends to be slower than the technical migration because a contract is for a very, very long run where technically there are solutions that are available tomorrow or within 48 hours, thanks to the mobile. That was for use case of advance. If we now turn ourselves to CareProd, we are not into a transformation, we are into an innovation. We will create something thanks to the flexibility of SD1 and wireless SD1. Loic, I will very quickly present your company, mm -hmm. then we'll go to the video, and then we will go through the very, very nice solution we designed together, and the together is very important. So CarePod is a recording and broadcast company. You master for years now everything related to audiovisual production. And well, COVID happened, as we all know. So we need to re reinvent ourselves and reinvent the technology. There again, out of, let's say, security, we have prepared a little video that I will send now. It's, it's your turn to listen yourself talking. It's a very nice exercise. Is it? Or is it not? Careprod is an events broadcasting and media production company and main part of our activity is related to the medical field. Our remote proctoring solution is technically allowing a specialist to connect to any kit deployed in hospitals over the planet. So it's allowing him to control remotely the cameras we deploy in, in the lab and to annotate on the screen directly. And for that, we need um, a, blazing a blazingly fast connection without latency. It was impossible to, make, to create that, that secure tunnel uh, without uh, 4G. During the Skidesis deployment, the main challenge was um, to provide an internet connection keeping safe all the data and the channel we were creating between each endpoints. The second one was we are deploying this solution and those kits over the planet, I mean, even in China, where we all know that the connection is not that easy. So um, it was important for us to rely on something that is really strong and pr protecting our customer data. So um, choosing the VPN and the speed fusion technology was 
one of the best uh, solutions for us. One more challenge, and not the least, was security in the hospitals. Most of them won't let us access their local network, neither connecting to their internet um, access. So it was important for us to find a solution that is really strong and bounding is not that easy. So um, we tried a lot of solutions on our own and we decided to use the packing boxes to to deploy these internet and breakable internet connections. Fen helped us on each challenging point concerning connectivity. The first one was um, encryption. Um, and it was not that, hard, not that hard to encrypt the data, but who means encryption sometimes means more latency. And beating that latency was not that easy. So uh, the first step was to how to improve latency using 4G bounding and speed fishing tunnels, um, all keeping in mind that we needed that encryption. The second point was uh, which, which hardware should we use? Because we needed to deploy something that is um, light, easy to deploy, and something that we could configure uh, remotely because we don't have any technician on, on, on site. Each kit is provided without any human support, so we, needed, we really needed something um, as easy to deploy as it is complicated to, de to create. The, the main question was, I need something uh, really easy to deploy, but I need something like quite magical. So, uh, see, I want to have connectivity, I want to have 4G and a high bandwidth, uh, with the lowest latency, encrypted, and anywhere in the planet, and, and even in an operation room with leaded walls. And we made it, because the network that then uh, helped us to, to, to deploy is really amazing, and is providing our customer something as easy as uh, their own home network and Wi-Fi connection, so they don't know what's happening in the background. They think it's just a 4G uh, stick, but the fact is, it's really more than that. Our customer is really happy with that, so um, challenge is beaten. Loic, hmm? good video, happy to hear yourself talk on that, always a fun experience. It was funny. It was funny. It was funny. Mm -hmm. So, if we look at the technical needs for this innovation, um, I have a list there in front of me. What would you consider that was the, the biggest challenge for you out of the? Um, the? The biggest challenge was stable upload and, and, and download. Um, and I can't see the latency stuff, but I might ask, I might put that too. The latency. Well, if we deep dive on what was actually achieved uh, to explain a bit to the audience, for your system to work, uh, to operate, you are bringing uh, remotely controlled cameras into a surgery room. And then you have this system, this desktop that has been fine-tuned by CareQuad where you're running your software. And we designed with you a solution based on a wireless SD1 router. And, and I'm gonna come back later on why actually you need SD1 for this. And we connected it through different 4G networks. And I insist on the difference. You can't do this kind of solution using only one network. Remember that it is an international solution deployed anywhere in the world. So you need to have the network, you need to have the SIM cards, you need to have something that will adapt to whatever situation. And sometimes if we're really, really lucky, you will have access to a local Wi-Fi but you need to be careful with what you use and how stable these are. So we are in this surgery room, you're filming something, and this data actually flows through different clouds up to the other side of the world to what we call the proctor, which is the expert that will advise 
from the from a distance what is happening on the surgery room. So this proctor has a, has a joystick or as a tablet where it can remotely control the cameras. And what we see on the bottom is where the SC1 is going to kick in. I take whatever access is available, 4G access, Wi-Fi access. If we're super lucky, it would be an Ethernet one port. But then inside the wireless SD1 router, this becomes a private, secured transmission network. We can go to any public or private cloud, by the way, would it be Vulture, Amazon, uh, Google Cloud, Azure, and we will choose these servers for their proximity, the vicinity with where it's actually filmed. So that's how we're going to optimize the latency. We're going to take for the whole network, for the whole mesh, any point that is latency optimized compared to the surgery room or compared to the proctor. And then that was the, the first version that we designed together, Lloyd. We had the IP to IP connectivity. It was a full private network for you peer to peer. How is that so important for you? Um, you mean about the peer to peer connection? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, some, something really hard we 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 encountered is is the security that hospitals want to observe when you you penetrate inside an operation room, and for that we needed to have first an encrypted solution, and and creating a tunnel was. Um, the faster and easier way to do, and we cannot connect and, and provide internet from their system. So it was for us the only way to, to do that stuff. So it was the nature of the data that makes it so complex in the end to, to treat. Hmm. And if we step again back, then if you want to realize about the size of it, it's, it's everywhere. We can now deploy it anywhere in the world uh, we could probably do a uh, prop talk tomorrow from, from space if Alan wants to, to take you with him. Would be uh, possible, <laughs> yeah. would optimize latency from that. Um, but the magic behind it, where this wireless SD1 actually kicks in is in the technologies behind it, the link aggregation, packet-based distribution, uh, the traffic prioritization, latency optimization, packet drop. There are so many of these different techniques that can be combined in the end to provide you uh, an efficient connectivity that will match the application, that will match the need. And the purpose of, of this illustration is that when you're doing an innovation like CarePod, you don't necessarily start right away with the perfect solution. But you can't afford to build an entire network and then decide to throw it away and start again, unless you can build and build different types of architecture on the same network with the same hardware. So if we look at what we achieved with you up till now, and, and we'll talk right after what we're going to do tomorrow, you had a connectivity independent for local infrastructure. We actually don't need anything from the hospital to provide end-to-end -end streaming which is something very amazing for them. They keep on getting to us with these um, IT appliance documents. They're like, we don't need anything from you guys. We just plug our solution on power and then we can run. Um, and, and this can be also very useful in other segments than, than medical. You can look at uh, security uh, for, for the infrastructures, uh, security cameras, if you want to protect the environments. There are many use cases where actually being completely independent is a strong asset and a strong sign of quick deployment. Now, if we look at what we used, all the networks in the world are used in the solution. Uh, I think we did Australia with all the local operators, uh, Japan, Brazil, uh, anywhere in the world, we can actually now deploy and start uh, demonstrating the efficiency of your solution and hopefully sell it a lot. Yeah. Evolutions, we were going to use 5G on this. What do you expect from 5G actually? What would be your hope about this? About 5G? Yeah. Um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm loving the lowest latency possible. So I think 5G might help us to have a quicker solution, maybe remotely control any machines in the lab. So 5G for me is like a dream because of the, um, of the low latency it provides and, of course, the bandwidth we could um, um, have with the, that solution. So 
it means a lot but again 5g is like a dream so right now we're in the concrete with 4g and making it happen yes can That's you maybe it. share uh, what is the latency that you see in this kind of fully wireless SD1 environment across the world today? Okay, so um, you mean concerning the first deployment of the version one or the last one? Whatever you feel like. Yeah, okay. So version one um, of the world solution, uh, we were able to have under half a second from France to Australia, an example. And now we are around 200 milliseconds, which is fantastic. Quite impressive. So you can really feel like when you're touching the, the cameras are moving right away. And yeah, yeah. this is the kind of experience you wanted to create with the solution. Exactly, exactly. That's okay. exactly what we wanted. So let's hope we will do a V2, a V3, and lots of evolution based on SD1 uh, afterward. Um, if we have questions from the audience, about this specific use case or the, the one of Hervance, we'll be very likely to answer them for now. I would also like to invite people to ask for proof of what we are stating. There is nothing better than, uh, than seeing it and using it to understand. And, and this is the approach we took uh, with you, uh, Loic, very quickly, build a proof of concept, see if this can support what you guys are, are willing to build. And then from there on, it, it grew up and grew up and scaled up to a, a complete worldwide solution. Yeah. It does not always um, need to be a huge project with 200 mandates. It can sometimes start very small and then you unleash the potential of these kind of technologies. Therefore, we offer you a free demo if you want to register using our infosecurity at ventelecom.com address. And for the rest, just feel free to ask anything you would like to know or use our Q&A tool from Zoom. I think we're quite in the time for us. No, I didn't see. <laughs> okay. What is the role of devices mentioned on the previous slides? Let me check that. If you mean this one, uh, Jerry. So these routers here, these are the wireless SD1 routers. So it's in, in one router, you will have the 4G modems, two in this case, a Wi Fi that can be captured as one. And it will do the aggregation, the bonding, create a tunnel, and send the traffic to a virtual machine hosted in one of the public clouds. It will send through the different public clouds. Actually, we are in a multi-cloud environment. It's completely transparent. The SD1 handles it on top. And then it will be sent back to the router that is on another location in the world, again on 4G, up to the desktop. So these are my, let's say, my gateways to the cloud. This is lifting my traffic towards the cloud to be accessed from a different location. If these are the ones you asked uh, your question about. So I was second slide from the end of the presentation. Oh, here, I'm guessing. Okay, so that's the shimmer. Yeah, correct. Or well, that one, this be. Okay, yeah. yeah. This one, I guess. Yeah. So this is... Um, I'm not sure, I'm waiting for Jerry to confirm. Let's assume it's that one. That would be a dual cellular router that will bring you be the same scenario uh, and keep evolving with the solution. Okay, sorry, thank you for this confirmation. So, the transit duo is the device we used uh, inside the surgery room or in the office of a surgeon, the, the expert, the proctor. Uh, DHT4 is a bigger one we would use in case of very, very difficult environments. So we had like 150 years old hospitals with very, very thick walls. Uh, so we had to simply scale it up. And instead of taking a dual modem, we had to take a four modem uh, solution. But that's also the beauty of SD1. You actually decorrelate configuration capabilities from the hardware. 
you have an easier solution, you just take a lower hardware. You want something bigger, you take a bigger hardware. The Fusion Hub is the virtual machine that is deployed in all the different public clouds, and they will handle themselves the full mesh uh, scenario between all these elements. So between AWS, Google, and, and Azure, I have actually my own private mesh of VPNs between all of them that is easily managed from one orchestrator. I don't need to play and start building these tunnels between each other, uh, between these different clouds. Uh, and by the way, this is also dynamically used for optimization of latency. Um, I think that answers your question then. As I said, you have the any to any full mesh. And if you're looking at one specific location, let's say France, France would get out from Paris and then from Paris, it would go into the full mesh network. And from this full mesh network, it would get out, I don't know, if you are from Sydney, if you need to connect to someone who is in, uh, in Melbourne or in Sydney. So even with this kind of infrastructure, even using the widely available public cloud, you can still maintain very, very low latency, like 200 milliseconds across the world. This is, we were even surprised or sad, so not only Loic, <laughs> actually. But that's also the beauty of 4G. You have to consider 40, 60 milliseconds latency, and, and you, we are in peer-to-peer, -peer, so from one part to the other, it's almost a direct path. So that's also where you short-term uh, the exchange compared to going through the VLC server first that we need to process everything and then send it back. Other questions? Not that I see. Uh, all contact details are on the webinar uh, details. For Loic, you can reach him on careprot.com, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm looking forward to the next versions and the wider expansion of your solution. Um, if it's over for today, I would like to thank every attendees uh, for the different questions and your uh, attention. Big thank you, Loic, and a thank you for yours who could not attend, unfortunately. Thank you all. Enjoy the rest of the day, and please stay all safe. Bye-bye.